conversation that happens. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Soul, soul, why do you persecute me? Imagine the anguish that he's saying that with. He was not, hey, come into my office. Let me just ask you a few questions, soul. Hey, why do you persecute me? I want to imagine with just a little bit of the creativity in my little brain. He might have said that statement and that, asked that question with a little bit of hurt. A little bit of pain. So why are you hurting me? Think about a child that's being hurt. Think about a bully that's bullying one of you. Why are you hurting me? Think about a wife that's experiencing abuse in the marriage. Why are you hurting me? Oh, sorry, there's a youth convention. Why are you hurting me? The anguish in which Jesus may be asking soul that question. Why are you hurting me? And tonight some of you have maybe been hurting Jesus with our lifestyle, with our thinking, with our mindset, with our approach to our life. Where we're not counting our life as it counts for something. Your life counts for something. Don't waste your life. If you waste your life, I want to assume that you're hurting Jesus just a little bit. And Jesus is asking some of us here tonight, why are you hurting me by wasting your life? Running for the wrong things, running for religion. When you could be running with me in a relationship. This is not a ha hallelujah message. So, so why do you persecute me? And so I'll ask this question, who are you, Lord? He doesn't know for sure if it's Lord. He says, who are you? There's a comma there, correct? There's a comma. Who are you, Lord? And Jesus replies, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, let me tell you, Saul was not hurting Jesus physically, was he? The person of Jesus? No. no. That was not, that's not real. But why would Jesus say, you're persecuting me? When he was literally persecuting what? The people that follow Jesus, right? Yes. If anybody messes with the body of Christ, you're messing with the head. Jesus. Don't mess with the body of Christ. You could be a church going folk, you could be a pastor, you could be a leader, you could be a youth leader. I don't know and I really don't. I'm leaving tomorrow so I don't care. But I know that if you mess with the body of Christ, you are hurting Jesus, the head of the body. Because we are what? One body. We don't live in our own little bubbles. We are all connected in Dallas, to New York, to Florida, to, to Detroit. We're all one body. So he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But I want to go back to verse 3 quickly. And I want this just to be a study through the scripture. Is that okay with you tonight? In verse 3 he says, as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And then it says he fell. So two things happened. Suddenly, a light flashed. Right? And then what happened? He? The amount of darkness that Saul was carrying, that Saul was walking in that darkness that was invading his mind, invading his thoughts, invading his actions, invading his life, invading his speech, invading his eye, everything about his life was consumed by what? By darkness. To overwhelm darkness, to replace darkness, to remove darkness, what can only do that? Light. And for that kind of darkness to be removed, it was not the light of a church, it was not the lights of a stage, it was not the lights of anything else, but it had to be a light from heaven that really broke that darkness over his life. Some of us are in the bondage of the darkness of our past, of our generations, of our history, of everything, of our heritage even. There's a little bit of darkness that gets passed on from generation to generation. And I tell you, some of us are stuck in that darkness in our minds, in our actions, in our thoughts, in our purpose, in our future. But I want to tell somebody here in this place, suddenly tonight, some of you are going to experience a heavenly light, a divine touch from God. And the light goes on. The second thing. The light came to expel the darkness. For you are the light of the world. It's not our light that shines. It's not Pastor Cecil 